All right, lads, we're back again. And as you can notice, the setup's changed. I've got fucking set up in an apartment in, in Warsaw now. I was living in a suite in a hotel for maybe two months, but I was traveling as well. So it wasn't like I was fucking just sitting there, you know, on my ass nonstop. I still worked, but it's good to be in an apartment. It's good to have some sort of like grounding. You know, it's more to have, it's good to have more of a foundation. You know, it's nice to have that home base that you can have where you can still travel and do things, but it's good. I think everyone needs like one spot, at least a spot where they can sort of call home, even if that's a spot where they can still fly out of and do all that sort of shit. I think everyone needs that sort of foundation. It's good for the, the mind and it's a good place to have a place to put all your stuff. You know, it's ultimately, yeah, it's safe, makes everything easy. You know, if you've got a, a place where you can come back to, it's always good. But yeah, today what we're going to do, we're going to cover a different topic. These are going to be things that your father should have taught you again. I've got three things, three big ones. One's going to be reputation and, and what that sort of matters to a man and why it still matters. I know that in 2022, reputation isn't such a big thing because I think people are so fucking like foundationally broken that they don't really not only value themselves, but they don't really think that they deserve the truth from a lot of people. I think a lot of people lie so much that when other people lie to them, they're a lot more forgiving. You know, it's it's not like the old days where you had your family name and that's sort of all that you had. You know, maybe your dad was a blacksmith or your dad was some specific field where he was grooming you to take over from him. And they were, you know, breeding essentially just professionals in that specific field. You know, it's not like the days of now where you can, you know, your dad might be, I don't know, a truck driver, and you don't follow him. He doesn't really teach you any of his fucking skills that he has. Instead, he essentially lets you choose, and you just choose a field that often is the wrong field for you to be in. You know, I find that it's a complete, like, anomaly that they do those things in the West where the father won't even pass down much of what he knows. The father sort of just expects that the school's going to teach, like, teach their son anything. And all that the schools really are is an indoctrination camp. A lot of the best, like the elites, they teach their sons, like they have their sons with them in their business. They groom them to take over the business. They teach them to work for their dad and essentially become their dad. That's how they hold on to power. That's how they become extremely powerful because it's very centralized. Whereas the commoner, he is very much of the order of, you can be anyone you want, you know, just... Like your dad might be working as a mechanic, but yeah, you're just going to go now and you're going to do a completely opposite field. And that's different, difficult, because you're always starting from zero. Whereas your dad could have refined himself through you multiple times and then eventually got to like the best version of that specific trade or the best version of that specific person. That's the way that the elites do it. That's the way that it's meant to be done. But they tell you, you know, to be a free spirit and fucking do your, pretty much your own shit. And then when you're left to your own devices, you're not really a professional. You know, you're starting from zero again and again, and then your kids are starting from zero. So yeah, it's, I find that's a, a bit of a fucking like disastrous concept. It happens more in the West. It doesn't happen as much in certain countries, but that's not to say that certain countries are better off for it. You know, a lot of the poorer countries, it's done, I guess, more by necessity. They sort of have to have that family unit that's very connected because it's quite dangerous in a lot of these countries. You know, it's not, a lot of them aren't safe like the West. You know, there's issues in the West, but it's fundamentally quite safe. You know, you can put your money in the banks and not worry. It's still an issue, but not, not to the large degree of some other countries that you're going to wake up one day and your account's going to be at zero and you're going to have to start over again because, you know, the currency's collapsed or the banks have failed or something like that big fund or insurance fund that, you know, had your family pension and it's gone bust. You know, I'm, I know this happens, but it happens considerably less than other countries. Like let's say Ukraine, for example, you know, I, I know people in Ukraine that have had considerably large businesses, you know, a girl that I'm seeing her fucking family runs like a dentist there and they were doing very well. And then the war broke out, you know, and that's essentially they've had to close that down. So it's like a, a generation of business. It's just pretty much been put on hold, but, it's going to essentially go to zero because if it's just that way for years, you know, they still have to live. So it's hard to get ahead in places like that. You know, it, it takes time to like acquire assets and acquire resources. And if every time you sort of like get a leg up, your country goes into a massive war, it's very difficult because you're essentially starting back from pretty much zero. 
so it's not that they don't have the skills or the fucking abilities it's just that they're in a country that's like war-torn you know so compared to that the west is is quite safe you know it's i see a lot of people in the west and, and i always wonder how they're like not on their way to wealth you know it is i know that it's hard and that it's hard to be focused if you're living in like australia or america or something like that because there are a lot of distractions there are a lot of like psyops to essentially keep you like a fucking consumer and not really acquiring wealth or not really building anything that's going to last you in the long term you know you're not really building to a business you're like the rent till you die type like you're renting a job you're pretty much renting everything that you own you know you're not really going to have even if you can have a family like if you can sustain a family a lot of people can't they don't even have like the prowess to like get a partner that would have kids with them but even if they can a lot can't sustain a family like they can't support it financially it costs money to have kids it costs money to have a wife it costs money to have even a partner that you want to have kids with like you know if you've got women it's there's always a cost you know they're not free they want to do shit and things like that and the man generally has to pay so what i found was the first one is going to be foundation but foundation based around your reputation uh, these are things that your father should have taught you and i know in a lot of cases that's the thing that's not taught you know i know a lot of stuff is westernized where like chicks will jump on only fans and you know I, and i'm not against that specific field you know i have been in a field myself where my reputation is as in that specific field and my reputation itself was damaged from you know dealing drugs for a considerable time i still deal with the reputational consequences all the time you know i was going for apartments in warsaw even me i have pretty much unlimited money and it's still not that easy you know, it's still not that easy when people can search your name and see like your fucking like criminal history pops up. And it's not only that, it's written by someone who fucking didn't like you. So they've written it specifically like brutally to try and fuck you around. So even with all my connections and resources and things like that, it still has somewhat of like, I would say a minor effect, but there is still an effect. So I can only imagine what it would have for someone who doesn't have the connections and situation that I'm in. I imagine it is still quite damning. A lot of guys will change their name and things like that after they've had like a reputational issue. I would never do that. I think that that's just running from who you are. I think you can't run from your past. You know, you can't, you can't live with shame. Like a lot of people do. A lot of people are generally shameful of, of things that they do. You know, they might have a habit or something that they're not like proud of. They might be fat. They might be out of shape. You know, they might not be looking after themselves the way that they should. They might not be telling the truth or living like an honest life. So I think that there are shameful people, you know, but I think, yeah, you generally you just can't run from your past. You got to face it. You, know, you got to face it today or face it eventually. And I always thought like when you've got kids, like you, you have to like eventually just put your back against the wall and fight because you have to fight for your family, you know, you know, and, some of you, like, I know the girls jump on OnlyFans and shit like that. And, you know, they're pretty much got, like, photos of their butthole on the internet that guys have been buying for, like, a dollar, you know. So when those girls eventually have kids, I imagine that they're going to have a lot of shit that's, like, they're going to have to answer to. And they're going to have to fucking, like, you know, have the hard, hard questions. And if the money makes sense for them, like, if, if they're actually genuinely making, like, real money, where they, where it's the risk to reward is that I can understand that. There was someone who was in that specific field of selling drugs and dealing with escorts a lot. You know, a lot of escorts that I, I knew were selling drugs for me. You know, that's partly how I did so well in that field. You know, but yeah, so I understand why they do it. But there are reputational consequences to things like that. You know, it's the reputational damage doesn't go away. You know, it's not really something that... And women think that have like the sort of conflated view where because guys will still deal with them and that's the funny thing like a girl on only fans or like a girl who's fucking like you know a hoe in general like she might have fucked everyone knows that she's fucked tons of guys she can still get laid like that's the thing with these women like they can still fuck guys like guys will still fuck them and guys will still entertain them and guys will still promise them the world so they think this guy wants to marry them and that's the funny thing with these women Unless the woman's working for like an agency or she's working for her man or like she, you know, she's on OnlyFans, but it's run by a guy and it's, it's run by her man. And you know what, they're doing it together and things like that. Like she, he's managing her and he's doing all these things. In that case, it makes a lot of sense because it's like, you know, they're, they're building something together and it's, she's become an asset and 
you know, they're working in together and they're building something sort of special. I can understand that. But when the woman's doing it on her own, you know, she's doing all the chatting and things like that. She's hardening herself up because she's seeing a lot of simps and a lot of guys that are pretty much massively thirsty. You know, there might be married men that are subscribed to her. There might be like, you know, guys that will say fucking anything to get in her pants. So her view of men is low. You know, it's going to be incredibly low. Her overall like opinion of men is going to be that they're pretty fucking much trash. But then also, like I said earlier, her reputation's damaged, but because guys will still fuck her, guys will still entertain her. Like, you know, if she's very hot, like some guys, you know, of means will still promise her the world. But no one wants to marry that girl. You know, a, a lot of these girls are essentially selling their youth. Like they're selling their youth and beauty. Like they're getting flown around, they're doing all these things, but like they're selling it quite cheap. Like if you think about it, you know, I sold dope but I made like a lot of money doing, it. <laughs> you know, that's all it ever was about for me. I know a lot of guys now specifically in Australia, which is what I can comment on. They only do shit like that for the clout. You know, they, they want to play like, you know, big boy and everyone fucking like likes them. And, you know, they, they want to seem cool and be accepted and, you know, but that's like, that's bullshit because you get a lot of jail time for that specific like fucking thing. So the reputation it's got reputational damage, but it's also got like, obviously you lose years of your life eventually. I mean, everyone who's fucking selling drugs, eventually you'll get busted, especially if you're selling a lot. I can't really comment on guys who are fucking like selling bullshit amounts of drugs or fucking wasting their time or doing like all this petty fucking like drug dealing. I can't comment on that because I find it like incredibly stupid, but I can only comment on stuff on the higher end and that when you do get caught, it's going to be a considerable fucking issue. But yeah, so you've got women on OnlyFans, but it's not just the women on OnlyFans, you've got the fuckboys in general too. So fuckboys to me are guys who are incredibly thirsty. Their, their life generally revolves around like pussy, like chasing pussy. They're chasing pussy on Tinder, Bumble, Instagram. They're DM and fucking everyone. They've got essentially like pretty much no filter. They'll add like their friends fucking girls or like girls that they know that other people are fucking like fucking and things like that. They don't really care. They just run around thinking with their cock. And short of a few content creators that do that, like, and they do that because they have a lot of clout, massive platform, big audience, money, things like that. It's not really things that guys do, like that end up successful because that sort of behavior will isolate you from other men. The only guys who are gonna put up with that are other fuck boys or guys that are of the lower end, you know, guys that think that that's acceptable. Because once you get up to the higher end, I'm not saying that I'm at the fucking like tippy top of the high end, but I do hang around with some very high end people. They don't like fuck boys. Like a lot of them are, start to get more on the conservative side. You know, a lot of them, and once you go very high, are more like family based and they start to get more like religiously based. You know, they, they want to like structure, they start thinking of legacy and the long term. You know, a lot of them have businesses that they want to leave to their sons. You know, and have their daughter involved as well, but ultimately they're grooming their son to take over that specific business. Whereas the fuck boy in general, he's just running around with his cock out. Like he lives a lot of his life like that. And there is a considerable reputational damage to that because guys of means don't want to be around that behavior. And then to be seen with a guy like that, it's damaging to your reputation. There are a lot of guys like that do that sort of thing that I would never even get in a photo with. Because I know that People see that photo and birds of a feather flock together. It's an old saying, but it's incredibly true. Like when you see people and you see the one in the group that's a fuck boy, or you see like one in the group that's dishonest, or you see one in the group that's like generally a scumbag, you'll find that the whole group are scumbags. It's just in different fucking like levels. You know, it's different levels of scumbag, but the behavior is all going to be much the same. Because that's what they don't really tell you either. You become, I know the saying is you become like the three or the five people that you spend the most time with, but it's very true. And it's not just true to the upside, obviously, or the, it's true to the upside and the downside. I mean, if you're hanging around with like three great men, you know, and they might not be, you know, a fucking like multi-millionaires, but they might be slightly ahead of you and you're going to become much more like that. But if you're hanging around guys that are degenerates, you're going to, you're like fucking morals and that are going to become slippery and the thing is with morals see i don't i only consider a moral man moral if he can break the law like if he's got it in him to break the rules a lot of guys will say that they're moral but really they have to be like a worm or like a cockroach see i'm incredibly wealthy 
I have the fucking means to do essentially whatever I want. So when I do the right thing, it's by choice. You know, I have the opportunity to do the wrong thing all the time. So I have the fucking like handled the temptation. You know, if you're like a wage cuck every day, you don't really have the option to like tell your boss to get fucked because like you'll lose your job, things like that. But I can do that. Like if I, if my boss or I don't have a boss, but if I had one and he pissed me off, I could tell him to get fucked at any time because I already have that fuck you money. You know, I've already built myself into that. So I think that you can only be moral and you can only be a good man if you're capable of that. You know, if you're, if you're still capable of fucking like turning the tides, you know, putting your back against the wall and fighting, I think that's, that's what makes a good man. He has the opportunity to be bad, but he chooses to be good. I think that's a big thing. And yeah, rest a reputation and why you need to protect it. Because reputation is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So your reputation is what essentially is going to carry from not just you, but to your son. You know, it's going to carry through your family. You know, it's going to carry over to like your partner. And it goes both ways. You know, if you've got a partner that's fucking dishonest or shady or like, you know, acts like a hoe or does shit that's bad, it rubs off on you. Makes you look like a fucking idiot. So when you go to business meetings or like, potential business partners or peers hear about like behaviors that your partner has done and it's like fucking bad well that rubs off on you so they start to get a very low opinion of you before often before they've like gotten to know you so you straight away like over over fucking like overcoming problems you know that didn't really need to be there and what happens too is when you're meeting new people like you've got your reputation as well. When you're meeting new people for the first time, a lot of the time it is who you meet the person with. It's not like, you know, a lot of people will think, oh, I want to network, you know, I just need to run up and start talking to people and, you know, talking to like influential people and shit like that. That's a bad strategy, like in itself. A lot of the time, the best connections that you'll ever have are the ones that were introduced from a friend. Who's friends with that person? he's respected by that person that's a big thing like if you go to the club with a thirsty fuck boy <laughs> and maybe you're just with him and you don't know straight away it's every girl that sees you just assume like sees him with you just assumes you're exactly like that so you're like the social proof goes both ways you know it goes to the upside but also to the downside so if you're networking and you meet like this fucking important guy but you get introduced to him by like some guy who's a bit of a scammer well, straight away, this important guy's like, I don't want any... I'll shake this guy's hand or whatever, but I don't want anything to do with this fucking guy. So it, it does matter who you meet people with. And another one that I'm going to go into is travel. And why for most people, it's like most guys, it's complete bullshit. You know, travel in general is good once you've made it. Travel in general is good if you're traveling for a business. You know, travel in general is good if you're using the photos and things like that to like further your business. A lot of you guys will see like some of these big influences and that you don't understand that they travel because it's like content, you know, it gets them more attention, which funds like they're selling courses or programs. It funds their lifestyle, which then they use again. So they use the money that's brought in from that to travel more and do more fun things. And that draws new subscribers and things like that. So it gets more attention, which again, makes them more revenue. But then the average guy thinks that he needs to travel. That's complete bullshit for the most part. You know, travel is good. Yes, like I said, once you made it, maybe you want to go on a holiday like once a year. That makes a little bit of sense. But travel in general is bad, especially if you don't have your own area like lockdown. Like a lot of you will think that you need to travel to like Dubai and places like that. But then like you're in fucking some like mid, mid-sized city and no one even knows who you are. Like if you think that you're just going to show up to Dubai and like people are going to like fucking notice you, that's not going to happen. Like unless you're extremely important or like influential or not even you have a lot of money because there are a lot of guys there that have so much money that like they're going to eclipse you anyway. So the money game there is the money game is like extremely long. You know, you're going to need like hundreds of millions to really flex to a considerable degree there. And then a lot of the people that you're flexing with are just there like as a temporary holiday and then they're going to fuck off anyway. So you're building all this equity with people that are just going to vanish. So what the best ROI is always going to be for the average guy is to just get his own area unlock. You know, it's not about being like fucking Dan Bilzeri and running around the world. You know, it's, for some of you, it just means like having a mid-sized city, like in a few venues that you can go to where people know who you are. 
you know, it means like having like even just like a restaurant or like a fucking like just beginning with a coffee shop where you can walk in and people are like, oh, hi, Stephen or hi, like fucking Sam or whatever your fucking name is. You know, it, it, that's the start. You know, that's the start of like building some like equity in your area and people actually fucking know that you exist. A lot of guys now will, yeah, go to a restaurant and things like that. No one even knows who they are. <laughs> like they'll walk in there and they're like a fucking ghost. Like no one's really even fucking even knows that they exist. There are some people now that die and like no one will even know that they're not alive anymore. Like they're pretty much going to die in their apartment and it would take like weeks before anyone noticed and they would just notice because the place would start to smell. <laughs> so a lot of that's yeah, really fucked up. Like it's, you don't need to travel the world. Like you don't need to fucking like, you know, flex in like Maldives and flex in like fucking Mykonos and things like that. Some of you just need to get your own area locked down, like your local area. That's going to always be the best return. It's the best return on investment because it's the lowest investment. You know, that can just mean, yeah, having your local like coffee where you go for coffee. You start to introduce yourself to the staff there. You start to tip them. You start to build like equity up. They start to know your name. You're fun. You're like a funny guy. You know, it starts there. So you have like one place that you can go to where people know that you exist. Because what happens is you build good interactions and they talk about you to other people. And then that, that little net starts to spread out. And then you go to like, you know, you do your restaurant or your gym and you do exactly the same thing. And then your net again starts to expand. And the thing with people start talking about you, and I know it's a concept that you won't be able to really understand. A lot of you will think that it's complete bullshit, but I mean, I'm worth over $10 million. I know this matters a fucking lot. When people are talking about you, they're giving you your, their energy. Like they're giving you a piece of their energy. <clears throat> I'm not saying they're giving it all to you. It's not like some concept where you're on there playing fucking like lead guitar and you're just absorbing massive amounts of energy. It's not like that. That's why a lot of those guys end up with massive drug problems because they can't really like get that rush of all the energy that they got during that like interaction anywhere else than to take a shitload of drugs afterwards. So they can end up chasing that and taking massive amounts of drugs. But when people are talking about you, it's building energy. Even when people are talking bad about you, it's still building your energy up. Like if people are talking badly about you, but you don't really like consider them. Like you don't really give too much of a fuck about them. You're still taking energy. Like you're still taking energy. In. Negative energy can still be like very powerful. I built a lot of my fucking like wealth and myself up from negative energy. You know, a lot of this stuff, yeah, it's like people throw bricks at you, but then you like start ca like capturing the bricks and like building it into something that fucking is like a massive mega structure. You know, it's, it's not a bad thing if people are talking bad about you, you know, not, not a bad thing if they're talking bad about you in like an envious way. Obviously, if you've done shit that's like fucking completely disgustingly immoral, then they're talking about you and it's going to really fuck your reputation up. Like if you fucking like hurt a kid or done something extreme, then yes, that's, you know, they should fucking bury people like that. So of course that's going to be very damning. But if they're just like, it's like having a woman, right? Like everyone knows that if you've got an ex or something running around telling people how shit you are, like telling people, and I've had that many times, you know, I've had exes of mine, not recently, but you know, maybe like seven or eight years ago or more running around telling people how much she hated me. And then I would get her friends messaging me, fucking all like liking my shit, commenting on my stuff because it gets people interested. People know that when people are saying bad things about the person that often the opposite's true. You know, it's like, the insecure guy who meets the fucking chick and then he starts talking badly about her ex or someone that's like, you know, obviously a bit of a chat, you know, or the guy who's insecure at the club and he sees another guy at the club and then he starts like fucking talking badly about him to girls. And then the girls start to get interested in that guy because this guy's starting to send the guy his energy. Like he's showing that he's insecure, you know. So a lot of the stuff, yeah, it's about taking energy. It's a very important thing. Like you've got to learn how to do that. A lot of that is people starting to talk about you, building a network, building a network of people, building a network of good interactions. You know, it can just start out with good interactions at a coffee shop, you know, and then you, over time you exchange Instagram and things like that. And a lot of you can never understand that you can exchange in Instagrams even with a woman and not want to fuck it. Like I know that that's so fucking, that's a foreign concept for a lot of you. But the bigger your network is, like eventually, like she knows people. She starts telling people things about you. 
and then eventually she starts telling like hot girls about you like if the network expands far enough eventually hot girls start hearing about you and things like that and they get interested you know a lot of you will think that you only like want to have a conversation or anything with the girl who's fucking like you want to fuck you know that's a lost like missed opportunity to me like I know a lot of you too will not even like think of like putting a guy on you know like you won't even think of like helping a dude out like just the concept of helping a guy out or like you know giving a guy a tip or something like that a lot of you wouldn't do that because you only do things to try and get laid you know it's just the very fuck boy like that's the biggest thing in the world you know a lot of it is yeah it's very fucking like dumb because we're all men like a lot of the stuff yeah it's like what goes around comes around you know if you're not really helping men out like a lot of you won't like tip men you know won't give men many compliments or like you know if someone does like good service or something you won't be like oh yeah well done mate or something like that a lot of you live in such extreme scarcity specifically with other men and then you wonder why like men in general are extremely insecure you know a lot of men now will just about fucking do like i watch a lot of this fucking like bullshit happening in like you know oz or like usa or something like that a lot of the fighting and all that shit is just because men are insecure like they haven't really fucking like if you're a man it's very hard to even get told like that you do a good job it's a lot of men will live like almost their whole life like with maybe like five or ten compliments in their whole life you know and it's not just from women but from like other men as well a lot of men are just in such massive scarcity that they like try to fucking like they have to do extreme shit to get attention like in Australia guys will like fucking go around fighting and like fucking ten out guys and do all this crap and like just beat people up to try, try and get clout you know they'll do fucking like extreme things for attention guys these days will risk like getting a bullet put in them just so that they can get like a video that gets like 10k likes you know guys will fucking think like these videos and clips that they're doing like all the likes are just going to get sent to them up in the fucking like afterlife <laughs> it's Guys will burn their whole reputation these days just for like a little bit of fucking like a TikTok that gets like 50,000 views. They'll burn their whole future for that. Guys will go around like beating up other dudes in like broad daylight and doing real dumb shit. Just like to fucking impress a chick that's being handed around by like 30 dudes <laughs> before him. A lot of the shit like in, in Australia or like US or something like that, a guy will get like a platform, like a large platform and other guys will try and like beat him up or something just to get attention from it. It's really fucking like crazy. A lot of that stuff is just because guys in general, like there's so many guys that are just chronically insecure. And the easiest way to get attention is to do something dumb like that. Like it's very easy to destroy things. Like it's very easy to just run around and fucking break stuff. But the guys breaking things, they don't have any new ideas. Like they're not guys that are trying to help other guys. They're just trying to break things so that they themselves can get some attention while they destroy it. It's like the kid in fucking like daycare who builds this massive fucking like castle. And then some little turd comes in and just kicks it all over. <laughs> like it's, that's dumb. That's destructive. That, that's just fucking pointless as well. Like guys will risk going to jail for like fucking 20 years just to get like a shred of clout. Like who's going to forward them the cloud in prison? Like as soon as this shit happens, it's forgotten about the next day. Like no one really gives a fuck these days either. Like people don't have any morals. Like guys will be friends with each other and then if there's an opportunity to get some clout like attacking them or doing something like that, they'll try it. Like it's, yeah, this code of men is fucking like really low now. Women used to do that shit. But you find now that women have OnlyFans and things like that, they're very united. See, the thing with women and men, they're very different like that. Like if you ever see a woman get attacked or like online, a woman will post a photo and then she'll have like 30 chicks that post how fucking beautiful she is. That's a strategy. So you don't understand that, that they're inflating their value. See, women in general know that. They know that if they say like, I'm, oh, we're all eights and we're all nines, if you say things like that long enough, it does become true. So you don't know that. You think that like, it's all bullshit and all these sort of things, but it's not. Like, uh, reality is perception. And if people say things enough times, it does become true. You know, it's, it's true because the chick believes it, one. Her friends believe it, two. The guys are still going to treat her like she's an eight. The same guys who say that these chicks are trash and they're this and that are still in the chicks' DMs. Now, that's the hardest thing with guys. They have such little fucking self-control that, like, they still, like, a chick can be a five out of ten or, like, a four out of ten, like, fucking beast running around. And the guy will still fuck it. Like, he gets the opportunity. He'll still do it. The same guys that bitch about chicks will be in all in the chicks' DMs. It's fucking, like, they will never, like, actually practice what they preach. 
they're still they can't control their own thirst that's why guys lose like a guy will put a photo up or something and only his best brothers will comment you know it's not the guys really aren't supported because guys see each other as competition and women used to like when i used to go to school and that they'd call each other sluts and all that sort of stuff but that stuff died out they got smart see women are smart like that they know that they're best banded together whereas men are very isolated they see each other as competitors competition so they don't really fucking like get ahead you know it's it's a very smart thing that women did that they've done that i've noticed that now for like the last couple of years but it's much worse than ever like now you've got all women that have like so many have only fans and that and they've all banded together to like sort of promote each other but also to like when they promote each other too it gives each other strength like it gives each other like they can be a hoe and sort of like protect each other and it expands their network like they can fucking like the chick can fuck like have a threesome with fucking fuck like five dudes in one night and her friends will say that it didn't happen you know she's like expanded her network so now it's it gets harder to sort of like monitor them it's harder to like fucking keep on top of like if that's your girl it's it's a lot harder to fucking like deal with now in the old days they used to tell on each other a lot you know i was around those fucking days where the chicks used to dob on each other like one chick would go to even like out to the club and kiss a dude and her friends would tell everyone now a chick will get fucking threesomed in the bathroom and won't no one will know jack shit you know the chicks will lie for each other so they can all be hosed and that's by design but then the dude will do the same thing and like one of his so-called friends will dob on him <laughs> to try and get pussy like that's the that's the disaster for men and that's why it's it's only going to get so much worse Men in general don't have a lot of integrity. Yeah. And it comes back partly to reputation because if you've got a bad reputation as a guy who's, you know, going to snitch on dudes or like you sell your friends down the river or you're the guy that will do anything for pussy, you know, you're the fuck boy. You're really like an OPSEC risk, like you're a liability to your crew. You know, it's... Guys like that have no place in a friendship circle. Like it's just... They're so desperate for pussy as well, but not only that, they're desperate for validation. They're desperate to be like fucking like essentially loved. And I understand where it comes from because I know a lot of guys will live their life with very few compliments, very few achievements, very few accomplishments, very little recognition in general. So it's like the starving guys running around the desert, like he's in the Dubai desert and he hasn't had a drink in a fucking long time. And now like he, he'll fucking pretty much do anything for some water, you know, like... That's the way that it is for guys. Like, even if it's just like a drop, he'll fucking like just about like degrade himself just to get it because he needs it that bad. So I understand why that why it happens. And then you get a lot of these single mums now, like these OnlyFans mums and things like that. And they're raising sons, you know, they're raising sons again to be like validation seeking kids from women. You know, a lot of men are like that now, but a lot of men do it to themselves because they don't really accomplish anything. You know, it's... A man is only a man based on his work. See, a lot of guys in general, again, in Australia, they follow these guys that are like false prophets. Like they they might know the right things to say. They might look the part. They might fucking like jump on and, you know, talk a bunch of shit and generally talk badly about other men again. You know, their whole selling point is that they pretty much call other men fucking like, they'll like fucking like attack individual guys and, and posture and pretend that they're better than them or whatever. But the man is only a man based on his results. You know, it doesn't matter what someone says to me. Like, it doesn't matter if someone jumps on and fucking, like, talks crap, even about me. Because if your results don't match mine, like, it's... You're fucking, like, crazy. You know, like, you're you're delusional. A man is only his, like, results. He's not a man based on his, like, intentions. He's not a man based on what he says. He's a man based on what he does. You know, it's... Like, if someone says, like, tell me about Stephen. I'm a guy who came from fucking like Traralgon South. You know, it's a a town in Victoria of 200 people. You know, I was in eight schools. I was a professional Counter-Strike player. I was fucking like, what was I, 110 kilos or something at 19. You know, I was fat as fuck. I hadn't been with a girl until I was like 20 years old. You know, and now I would think that someone can say like, how far has this guy come? I mean, I'm worth over $10 million. I'm in shape. You know, I live fucking, can live anywhere I want, live around the world. I've got an amazing network of people surrounded by great brothers you know it's a lot has changed you know so when people come to me like talk shit about me i mean i want to see your results like if they match mine all right well you got a fucking like something to stand on 
But a lot of the guys, again, the guys that just knock things over and break things and like fucking insult people and do shit and like try and start conflict. Anyone can do that. Like it's, it's not hard, but that doesn't help anyone. You know, that doesn't help other men that look in and they think that that sort of behavior is the only way that they themselves can get attention. Like they're not actually fucking like building shit or doing anything positive. They're just breaking things, but they're also programming the next generation of men. They're programming the next generation of men to act like how women used to act 10 years ago. Like when I was in school, or 15, 20 years ago, when I was in school, it wasn't uncommon to see like women fight. You know, like women pull each other's hair, fight over guys, do all this sort of crap. You never really saw men fight over women. That wasn't really a thing. And now you just about see guys fucking kill each other over women. You know, if you were to pull fucking like probably three quarters of the murders or three quarters of like the guys who bash each other and shit like that for no reason it's because like it, it falls back to a chick you know like it, it falls back to some woman or some like fucking envy over a lot of the guys yeah the guys that get beat up randomly or something like that it's because the guy has a platform too often and the guy thinks that if he beats him up he's gonna like get some exposure on this platform or like you know if a guy's very wealthy and then some fucking dork comes along and wants to like you know, try and get involved in that. It's it's a thing. I mean, people don't really beat up cockroaches that are worth nothing. You know, it's it's not that common, but yeah, that's that's a big thing. It's a big thing in Australia. But that's only because, again, the men, the guys who are coming up, like the young boys, they're seeing men do that and they think that that's normal. That's how women used to act. <laughs> you know, a funny thing is that, that women are banded together now. It's not that common that you'll see women fight. I can't tell you the last time I saw a woman fight, like physically, compared to the last time I saw men fight over a woman. I mean, I see that quite often. You know, it's... If it's not a physical fight, you know, they're fighting online or some crap, you know, it's... And then it all boils down to some fucking chick. Often some chick that was the caliber of chicks that I used to fucking, like, would come... Come to mind, fuck. And she'd be, like, fucking, like, brushing fucking jizz out of her hair on her way to see her fucking next guy. And these are the guys, these are the chicks like the guys fucking fight each other a bit. Like essentially like packeties or like chicks that are just being ran through. But some guy, some like white knight pretends that it's for some other reason, but really it's just like, he's just starting conflict because it's over a chick or he's trying to impress women like that. It's a disaster because no, again, they're not really looking after men. Like men aren't really looking after each other. You know, they're trying to fight each other or trying to like posture or like, use each other to try and like build off, you know, use each other as a stepping stone. And that's just not the way that it should be. You know, it's very much how I am with my like brothers. You know, I build my platform and I'm building my platform now and I'm fucking like extremely honest about it. I'll build my platform and I'll use my platform to fucking boost my brothers up, you know, my my good friends. I know that they have shit to say as well and I'll use it to boost them up. You know, I'll be able to promote them. I'll be able to fucking like help them out. That's what it's about to me. You know, it's it's about sometimes you're like the fucking guy walking wrong. Sometimes you get the ladder up. Sometimes you get the snake down, you know, snakes and ladders. But then you get the ladder up and when you're up, you can reach down and help your friend up. You know, like you can fucking boost him up. You don't need to fucking like, you know, step on his shoulders and squash him down and just so that you can get a little bit higher. Like that's a fucking like just a disastrous fucking way to think. You know, you can both be very high. And then when you both get very high, it keeps the power centralized so that you can help each other. But how good would it be if you're at the top and you're like up there with all your brothers? You know, and then you can fucking like know that you've helped each other out, but you've stayed together and fucking like united. That's a big thing. That's the way that it should be. That's the way it is with many other fucking like content creators or, or a few of them, you know, that they have stayed loyal to each other and built each other up and essentially kept the power centralized so they can keep their message strong. They don't have a lot of outsiders running in that fucking like shit the place up. I think that's that's important. And another one's gonna be the last one and it's the importance of investing. I don't know that I've mentioned it before, but it's not just investing in like the markets and things like that, it's investing in yourself. I'm not telling you that you need to run around and spend fucking like $10,000 on programs and 20 grand on this and 20K on this and all this shit. But you need to like start investing in yourself. Some of you will be investing in yourself just living a life. You know, some of you just fucking like think that just because you're watching YouTubes or crap like that, that it's actually doing shit. You know, a lot of it is just an escape. Like you need to fucking like start living your own life. 
You know, for some of you, it might just be like joining a sports team. For some of you, it might be like just getting outside and fucking like going for a walk for the first time in a few weeks, you know. Some of you just need to turn the computer off, you know, because for some of you, I know that investing, some of you will have great prowess in it. You know, some of you crypto guys, I have known many. I ran a fund in crypto. You know, I ran a fucking very large fund. I was a partner, you know, I wasn't the only one, but I was in a large fund. And I know that some of these crypto guys have investing down to a T, but they don't really invest in themselves. You know, some of them will fucking like be worth plenty of money, but they're still eating like Uber Eats every day and garbage. You know, that's, it's not fucking like good food because even if you get it healthy, like the oils and shit that they use and the like salt, like spices and that, it's all the lowest quality shit that you can find. So it's not shit that's like meant to be eaten every single day. You know, it's a lot of it's very fucking processed, but also like the lowest quality shit you can find. A lot of it's going to be filled with chemicals. Like it's very hard to regulate. Some of these like Uber Eats shops are open like one day, like six months. And then this is like closed down like a bucket shop and they've like replaced it by another. It was Indian one day and now it's Chinese the next. And then it's like fucking Thai. They can just change it up like that. So then you go there and be like, oh, that food fucked me up. But like it doesn't exist anymore. Like it's just been rebranded to something else. So some of you just need to yeah, invest with like quality food. And that doesn't mean buying like the best shit on the fucking planet. You know, some of it just means eating like vegetables, fruit, like more natural stuff, you know, stuff that your body actually wants. Some of you, yeah, just need to like be a healthy weight. And it's not that difficult. You know, you don't have to fucking like look like me. You don't have to look like even fucking like built really well. You know, some of you, it's just going to be like, just be a healthy weight. You know, some of you might be like 300 pounds now or like 400 pounds or whatever. And for some of you, it's just getting down to like 250, you know, like 240 or something. And it's still, you'll still have work to do, but it's like, you know, it's just going to make your quality of life so much better. I've been a fat dude, you know, I'm not saying that I was fucking that fat, you know, that's very obese, but I was probably 250, 240 to 260 at like 19. (laughs) And I'm probably 200 pounds now. So I was, and that's, 200 pounds, but obviously I'm in the gym a lot. You know, back then I never used to even train. So that was, yeah, just essentially like 260 of fat. So I know what it's like to be that fat. You know, clothes don't fit you properly. Your fucking like moods are always like not really stable. You know, you're always like tired or not tired. It depends what you've eaten. You know, your blood sugar is spiking out of control all the time. You know, you don't, you feel like lethargic. You feel uncomfortable in public. You know, you don't look good. You know, a lot of the stuff doesn't really fit properly. Like you get even like in your car and things like that. And it's just nothing's ever really that comfortable. It's not made for people that sort. I don't know some of you Americans and that they're changing pretty much everything so that you don't feel like you're that fat, even if you're like 300 pounds, but it's not healthy. You know, it's not, you've got to respect yourself first. You know, before other people respect you, you have to like have some self-respect about yourself. Does it mean that you need to be like really built or like really strong or like extremely fit? But you need to, yeah, take care of yourself. You know, you need to have that foundational fitness. That foundational fitness is, yeah, like I've said before, it's getting to be able to bench your body weight to 20 minutes on the treadmill, you know, at like a running, like a slow running pace, maybe like an 11K an hour run, you know, inclines on like one. So it's not fucking like sprinting, you know, it's not that fast or that difficult, but you need to fucking like, yeah, just take care of yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, that's the hardest thing. Like people don't realize that now. If you don't love yourself, like no one's gonna ever really love you. You know, it's, and no one's gonna ever really like love you like you have to love yourself. You know, no one's ever gonna, like you're, you are not gonna be as important to anyone else as you are to yourself. Like your state of mind and your body and things like that, that's no one else's problem. Like that's yours. You know, when you're in your last dying breaths, none of that shit matters. You know, like it's the hardest journeys in life you're always gonna have to face on your own. Like your final trip, you're going to be the one that fucking like has to take it. You know, your hard times in the gym, like you might have a wife or like a mum or something that you love, but they're not going to be in there doing the fucking reps for it. You know, if you get in a boxing ring, like you have to box. Like it doesn't matter how good people you have around you. Like the hardest shit in life, it's going to be you. Like, you know, I can't get in there and fight for it. You know, it's going to be you that has to do the fucking like hard yards. Like if you're fucking like investing even like finance, 
I'm not going to be the one that, you know, if you make good money telling you to hold on to it or telling you to like close your trade or fucking like have the discipline to like have good money management or like have the discipline to build like a long-term portfolio or things like that. Like I'm not the guy that is going to be telling you to do all that shit. Like, you know, it's, it's eventually going to be on yourself. You have to want it enough, you know, but you have to think you deserve it enough. Some of you, I think, get the results that you think you deserve. I think most of you get that. You know, a man will generally find his own level in life. Like you chuck a man in the ocean, he's going to find like, you know, he's either going to sink or swim. He's going to go as long as he can or he's going to just fucking quit straight away. You know, you throw guys together in a room, the guys that haven't met each other, I've seen it in prison, they generally merge together in their own levels. You know, the people of their own class, like tiered, generally like end up together, like hanging out and talking. It's just the way it goes. But yeah, some of you just don't think that you deserve it. You know, some of you are like cripplingly insecure. Like you've got like a crippling fucking like anxiety condition or some other shit as well. A lot of it is just because you're not like social enough. A lot of you take in a lot of like fucking doom and gloom and like blackness from black content. Content that either hates women, tells you that the world's going to fucking end or all this crap about like conspiracy theories and shit like that. And while some of it is true, I don't doubt that some of it is true. It's nothing you can change. No, it's nothing that you're going to sit there. Just some of you think that just because you're taking all a bunch of information, even if it's truthful, it's actually hurts you. Like there's no positive in knowing all of that shit because you can't influence it. You know, it's just flooding your mind with like making it seem like there's nothing that you can do, but then it just justifies your own lack of action. Because you start to think like, oh, yeah, I don't have to do jack shit because like it's all going to end in fucking five years anyway. And then, yeah, it just becomes a vicious circle. Obviously, it's all not going to end in five years. You know, it's pretty obvious to me the way that shit's going. It's just going to be much more of the same. But some of you like eventually going to have sons and kids and things like that. And you need to like have shit to pass down to them. You know, you yourself need to work on your foundation because when you have a son or like a daughter or whatever, you need to be able to teach them a foundation. You know, otherwise they're just going to be more of these like paper men running around that are fucking like confused and fucking insecure and they don't know what men do. You know, they're either going to be these like soy boys jumping online, talking a bunch of garbage as like anons and just hating on everyone from behind a computer. Or they're going to be these other guys just running around fighting people, trying to get clout and just being like really full of conflict. But that's only because they themselves can't like get attention any other way. They have to like fucking just push shit into the world and fucking like try to hurt people and shit just so people notice them. And that's fucking dumb. Like, you know, it's it's one thing to commit crime and things like that if you're like making money. It's one thing to commit crime like, you know, if you're in a bad place. Like if someone here comes in from like the war or something and they're stealing food and shit like that, I understand that. Like I don't hold it against them. Like if I see someone from like Ukraine or something that's got no money and I, and I was walking around with all this like fucking gold on and they tried something with me, I wouldn't take it that person. You know, I mean, I would fucking have to handle it, but I wouldn't sit there and be like, this guy is a fucking monster. Some people are just hungry. You know, it's, it's one thing to commit crime because you sort of have to. And it's another thing to commit crime because you fucking like want to make money. You know, you, you want to make money so bad that, and you want to get rich, you know, it's, it's one thing to try it in that field. And then it's another thing to just like commit crime for the sake of committing crime. Like that's pretty fucking dumb to me. You know, it's something that you really do to get ahead. It's not something that you just do for no reason, you know, just to like shit the place up or like shit the world up. Because a lot of these guys committing crimes and doing a bunch of crap, they're guys that haven't been to jail before. And then when they go to jail for like fucking five years for like grievous bodily harm or some bullshit, like fuck their whole life up. End up getting out with like a subby habit or some bullshit and just blow their life up for trying to get clout for five seconds. And no, like the only people encouraging that sort of crap are guys that are like fucking losers themselves as well. You know, they just want to like see blackness in the world. They're the same guys that like see two dudes and try to start a fight like back in the old days, like back in the fucking like high school days. They try and run around and start fights with other people, like fight the battle. It's fucking dumb. Like it's stupid. It's crazy because that shit there from high school, but grown men still haven't grown out of that. It's really fucking wild. But again, women stop doing that sort of thing and now men do it. You know, men, men hate each other essentially and compete with each other and all this sort of stuff. Instead of building each other up, instead of giving the men value, men subtract their value. 
men run around and tell everyone how every other man shit but them. And then women look in and they're like, oh, men must just be shit in general. <laughs> it's instead of women where they like tell each other that they're all eights and nines. So they can like fucking inflate their value and men deflate their value. It's fucking insane to me. It's just a thing that they do, but yeah, it's stupid. So investing in general is going to be investing yourself first. You know, investing in your body, your fucking like mind as well. It doesn't mean running around reading 600 books. It's generally just going to mean doing things like getting out there, living life. You know, it can mean for some of you, if you've got like very little life experience, just joining a sports team, boxing gym, kickboxing gym, getting out there in places that are like difficult, you know, getting out there and getting around other men, getting around people. I think in general, men also have an issue where they fight each other so much or like disagree or like battle online and shit. Because they don't really spend time around other men. They don't realize like other men are humans as well. You know, a lot of these like guys online talk shit are just like autistic robots <laughs> running around and they pretend they themselves don't have feelings as well just because they're so fucking like trying to distract themselves so they don't feel bad. But then they just, yeah, again, just spreading more shit into the world. And guys get shit on so much that they just push it out into someone else, you know, and it's very often I'll see online, it's not really even guys against girls. It's sort of like guys just fighting each other, you know, and it's again, just to be like king of the castle, but it's like king of fucking nothing. You know, it's not things that are getting them ahead. It's not things that are making the money. It's not things that are like fucking getting them anything really. You know, guys are just about killing each other now for clout and killing each other just for fucking like a little bit of shred of attention from some girl that's been fucking trains run through her. You know, it's very stupid. It's very fucking like short term. It's not long term thinking. And then the young generation see that and think that that's normal. You know, and then they think they need to do the same shit. Like that's the what their way to get attention. You know, that's their ticket. That's just what people do, and that's not what people do. Like men in general work. That's the thing with these fucking guys too. They they don't really work. Like, they don't do shit. Like a lot of the guys are just destructive, but like them themselves are just don't really fucking like they've contributed nothing to the world. They have no money, they've got nothing going on, so they're just like angry and looking for people to blame. And then as soon as another man stands out, they're like, this is the guy whose fault it is for, for my fucking like inadequacies. So then they try to jump on it. And it's crazy. Man is a man that's busy. He works. He fucking like, you know, he's respected in his community. He works to get respected in his community. He's respected in his household. Do you think the guy who's running around destroying things, even if he could somehow like find a partner and kids like that they respect him? They don't. Like, he's just fucked up his whole fucking, like, generation. His gene pool should die with him in jail. Like, that would be the best outcome. Maybe that's why they fucking smack so much subby. Maybe it makes them infertile. That would probably be a good thing. <laughs> so, yeah, just in general, the man is a man who has a route to have a family. Like, he has a route to have people that respect him, care for him, rely on him. You know, the destructive guy and the guy who jumps the line and talks a bunch of shit, no one relies on him. Like, the only person who could rely on him is to, like, shit the world up. Like you can rely on him to add some like snarky fucking feminine comment. You know, you can rely on him to like bomb the fucking posts with just garbage. You know, and it's, it's very fucking like feminine, but I can't even say it's feminine because women don't do that anymore. You know, women are gassing each other up, but then you'll see men fucking like tearing each other down at every opportunity. It's absolutely insane to me how the fucking thing switched, but it's very intelligent that they've done that. It's actually part of why they're having so much success in general women the thing with women is they're having short-term success yes but the men who are doing this sort of crap are having short-term success as well because what do you think their outcome is for the man at like 35 or 40 who's done this sort of crap his life like he's essentially like he's going to be the woman you know he's going to be 40 year old loser and no one's he's with no money fucking like a list of felonies all this crap and no one's going to want that guy you know versus the the 20 year old that he fucking like brought up teaching him all that bullshit ways because the younger guy watched him do it and now he's like fucking emulates him and he's just like a more refined version of that guy the other guy's just now old and like no one listens to him anymore it's fucking it's a disaster like if i wasn't worth 10 million dollars if i hadn't run many successful businesses i wouldn't be on here you know i'm only on here because i can teach guys things you know i've done the fucking shit that matters i've got the receipts that matter I know a lot of guys will jump on and be like, oh, but you weren't, you weren't in the army long enough. You weren't like fucking in prison long enough. You weren't like in a fucking veterans hospital long enough. Like, yeah, you made $10 million, but you sold drugs and all this shit. 
there's always like, yeah, what? <laughs> like, and then the guys saying this sort of shit their whole life have done fucking nothing. Like they, they've done fucking like not even 1% of the shit that I've done. You know, it's just because you jump on and say like that someone else's fucking achievements aren't the highest level. You know, oh, this guy didn't get the Victoria Cross. That's like, what the fuck have you done? Like, you know, it's, it's my platform and I come on to talk about my life. I talk about my life and it still fucking triggers people. And it's just my own story. It's complete fucking bullshit. You know, it's not fucking like something that's like made up or something that, you know, you can't just fucking Google. Like people can search my fucking history. It's all up there. You know, I think that some of the new stuff that's written there is a bit fucking like... The thing that they do in Australia, and I noticed this for quite a while now, they talk badly about people in the media to try and encourage them to reoffend. Like when the news article and things like that, or ABC or whatever, this fucking like five foot tall manlet wrote my fucking article. He wrote a bunch of like shit in there to try and make me look like a retard. So then when... Like I read it, it infuriates me and then I like do something further. I see a lot of the stuff like the Daily Mail and things like that will write issues about like people that they arrest and they'll write it in a way that triggers them because they try to encourage them to keep offending. I know that. I know that the media, when they do shit, the fucking like journalists and things like that and how the media portray things, it's often the fucking complete opposite is true. Like a lot of the stuff that they portray are just generally lies. You know, it's... The shit with me is substantially true. You know, the charges and that are true. But the way that it's presented is to make me look bad. The way that it's presented is so that I'd read it and be like, oh, well, I'm going to fucking, like, keep going. I'm going to prove to these guys that I, I'm a fucking badass. A lot of this stuff that works because a lot of guys are insecure, though. They read that and think, like, oh, I have to prove him wrong. You know, I, people are going to think that I'm a fucking idiot, so I have to, like, keep reoffending. I know that, like, when you're caught, when you're caught, you're caught. Like, it's like you're sitting in the back of the squad car. What's the point of, like, continuing to roof in? Like, everything you do now is just going to, like, magnify the damage. You know, it's like treble damage. You know, you, you're caught. So everything you do from this on is just going to, like, multiply the sentence. You know, it's no, there's no point fucking, like, continuing to roof in. You know, it's best to just, like, swallow your pride at that point and just, like, fucking say nothing. But you're caught. You know, the shit that happened with me... I was originally charged with fucking like drug trafficking. So I was charged with drug trafficking under VLAT. So that's the fucking like gang law bullshit had just been reintroduced or just been introduced there. So the, under the gang laws, it's like multiplies your fucking like sentence, you know, like you're pretty fucked. Drug trafficking itself is an SVO now, or it was then, which means that it's a serious violence offense, means you have to serve 80% of your time in prison. So I had that, had it under VLAT as well. So even if I got eight years, I would have had to do like six or seven. And then I got it because I had an ex-partner at the time. And we'd seen each other for fucking not that long. And she fucking snitched on me. She didn't just snitch on me. She snitched on like a couple of people that I was like associated with as well. And what had happened probably like maybe like a month or a couple of months earlier, I'd had a friend of mine, not like a, a good friend, but like an associate friend of mine. And he'd been murdered. So I thought like fucking... I thought that things were going to be pretty fucked up at that point. I think that is partly how I got like busted or how I got charged as well. Because when someone's murdered, they look into fucking everything. You know, they get their own task force for that, for that specific murder and they look into everyone who's associated with that person. And often they find like if they find criminal offences, they will justify pursuing it because it's like within the, the budget. You know, like they've done all this groundwork. So why not charge the people that are fucking like linked to the crime? And then my ex at the time as well, or we were together at the time, she put statements on saying that she'd seen me like fucking selling drugs to people. And then they went to one of the guys' house that they said had seen, she said I was supplying and busted him. And then he put a statement in to say that he got the shit from me. So what happened with that? I ended up fucking retaliated, you know. It's the way that the world fucking works. You know, it's a way that that sort of game goes. Sometimes if someone snitches on you and it's a close, like, close friend or fucking, like, partner, it's not just that they snitch on you, they snitch on, like, associates of you. It becomes very dangerous. You know, it's dangerous because it's not just dangerous to the girl, it's dangerous to you. Because people look in and they're like, this guy, like, it's his fucking fault. Like, it's his, his girl, he doesn't have her under control. Like, she's not fucking, she's snitched on him, yes, but she's snitched on me as well. And it wasn't so much that 
the statements were worse on me, much worse on me, but they were still like supporting statements to get the other guys like fucked as well. And then obviously when I found that out, I retaliated. I mean, you can read about it online and you can read about the shit that happened. It is structurally true. You know, it's, wasn't that I fucking like, you know, wanted to so much hurt the girl. I wanted to like fucking send a message and I did, you know, it's not something that I think about and regret. You know, it's not something that I sit around and have ever pretended that I didn't do. You know, it's not something that I've gone to prison and been asked about that moment many times. I've been asked about it many times since then. I've talked about having a DV fucking breach on here. None of this shit's like something that I've hidden from. You know, it's not something that I've lied about and said that I didn't do it. I know that I did it. You know, it's not something that, it's not something that I run around and talk about and I'm extremely proud of, but it's something that I've nonetheless did. And it's something that I fucking, you know, if I had my time again, I, I would probably still do the same thing. It's more about at that point was sending a message, but also sending a message to other people, you know, that I'd handled the issue. See, the thing was, I'd had a, obviously had the friend around me, mur- he'd been murdered, like, you know, not that, not that fucking far ago before this happened. And it mentioned other people, so I knew that like the stakes were high. So I retaliated, obviously, did what I did. You can read about it online. It is true. And then I went down the tracks with fucking trafficking. You know, I got upgraded to Supreme Court for that. Supreme Court with drug trafficking, it's either, Supreme Court's either drug trafficking or murder. It's really the only two things that sit in Supreme Court in Australia or in Queensland anyway. And yeah, I went up to Supreme Court, said that I was contesting it the whole way through. The police came to me and said fucking all came to my barrister. Got all the way to Supreme Court, we're getting close to like a court date. And then I think because my ex was a pretty shit witness, like she wasn't just a shit witness. I mean, she'd been in that lifestyle with me for a long period of time. So it's like her integrity was very much in question. My barrister, I think would have like fucking shredded her like on the interview on the fucking like stand. Not only that, what had obviously happened to it at my hands, she was a very fucking like skittish witness. I mean that don't think that she really wanted to go to court and it's pretty smart that she didn't. And then, yeah, so what happened was the police, or the police came to my barrister and said, if Stephen takes these fucking like five charges or whatever, like he doesn't contest them. If he says like he'll plead guilty to like 15 supplies, some arson fucking bullshit, some fucking like other crap, the DV stuff, because my ex didn't want to go to court, all this other shit. If he fucking pleads guilty to that, we'll drop the drug trafficking. And the way that court works in Australia is, you're only really fucked as big for your biggest charge. Like a lot of the other stuff runs concurrent. So if you're in for murder, and then like they tell you that you've got like fucking 10 drug supplies as well, the drug supplies don't really matter because you see murder is your biggest charge. So a lot of the time it runs concurrent. Sometimes it can run like culminative where it runs fucking like one after another, but that's pretty rare. And mine all, all predominantly run concurrent and it ran up to, it's about six years. And I got out after like 18 months and a bit. So I served nearly a third. I think it was a third. I think it was just under six years sentence. So I served my fucking time. I got parole. I stayed out on parole. You know, it's nothing to be proud of when these guys jump on and fucking like talk about not getting parole and stuff like that. That's dumb. Like, who the fuck wants to sit in jail as long as they can if, like, you're not getting parole? Like, that's stupid. <laughs> like, you want to be out and free. I mean, when I was free, I made, like, a million dollars on my first year out of pre- out of prison. You know, um, when I'm out, like, I'm making fucking big money. Like, why would I want to be sitting in prison, like, fucking, like, staring at the walls? A lot of the guys can't get parole because they can't fucking stay off the subby tech for, like, a month and pass a piss test to get, like, their parole cleared. And then they run around telling everyone how cool they are because they fucking like didn't get parole. That's dumb. Like I never had that sort of drug addiction to do that sort of shit. But yeah, so I stayed out after that. Did my fucking like parole time. I had all the hell of bullshit, all the fucking like crap, the usual stuff. I had the tracking bracelet for like the first year or something. And then after that, yeah, I was making like a million dollars a year pretty quickly. You know, I'd made a million dollars a year the first year I was out. So yeah, it matters to me, you know, like it's a lot of the shit. It's nothing to sit in prison if you've got fucking nothing. Like if you're some fucking loser bum, like it's prison's not really a punishment if you're a loser. 
like it's yeah it sucks but like it's not doesn't matter like that you're in prison I mean if you're on like making fuck all anyway and like just generally taking drugs and that's the biggest part of your life you can do all that shit in jail so for them it's not really a punishment but for me it is you know to, for me to sit in prison I'm losing a lot of money but I'm also losing like I don't take drugs like if I get on it it's very fucking rare you know when it's this coke it's not like I'm fucking like some like subby head that's garbage like synthetic crap so for me it's yeah it's a it's a considerable punishment in there because I'm smart enough to know that I shouldn't be that you know so my shit yeah my shit the case that I got I mean I could have always contested the trafficking you know I might have had a, a good leg to win but I always got told by my barrister and I do believe that he was exactly right that even if I had have won the police would have fucked me over 10 times worse down the line you know the thing with the police they don't really let shit go and that's why I don't live in Australia you know it's a big part of why I'm not there because it's very hard you know the police will not really forget you in an area but then it's hard to like live big you know I make big money I like to flex I like to I own nice shit I like to have like fucking beautiful girls around me or whatever so when the beat cop sees that like he sees me drive past in like a Porsche or like a fucking Lamborghini he stops me you know he's he's not happy to see me do that like he's at work he runs the plates and he's like this guy just like he's out of prison for a few years and now he's fucking like rolling around doing all this shit if I was rolling around in like a fucking 1998 Holden Commodore I mean running around Deception Bay I don't think anyone would give two fucks but I like to live big you know I like to fucking like do nice things so no that's generally my backstory for that and yeah there's a few things that I think that the man needs to know you know this is going to be more of a video where it was mostly unstructured you know it's just my fucking thoughts on these specific issues and yeah but hopefully you get something out of it lads until next time